Hey folks, Alan Mandic, the Hot Rod Hippie here. In this video, it's exhausting. I'm exhausted. We're talking about the exhaust on 65C10 build. So let's check it out. Okay, corny jokes aside, I'm gonna walk you through the process of building the custom exhaust on the 1965 GMC, just so you can get an idea of what I do when I'm putting a system like this together. First, I'm gonna show you the situation we're working with with this 1965 GMC, the components we have to work around. Then I'm gonna show you the parts that I picked for this project, what we're using, and maybe a little bit of the why on that. And then we're gonna dive in and fully fabricate this system up as best as I can show you in this video. This is a 1965 GMC C10, not a C10, doesn't matter. The engine in this thing is a six liter engine out of a 2004 2500 HD. So it's an LS1 type based engine, LSX engine. We have a air ride suspension that can effectively lay this truck's frame on the ground. So we're gonna have to worry about clearance issues on this thing. We can't have an exhaust hanging down below the frame rails here. It will get ripped off. We also have a cross member at the back to deal with. That cross member is for the tubular trailing arm suspension on the rear of this truck. So we have to pass through there and guide through there without hitting anything. My dad and I also decided we wanted side exit exhaust on this thing. So when we were doing paint and body, we cut the holes in where we wanted them to exit out, as well as creating some trim rings that mounted on there so that when everything got painted and body worked, those were already there and they could be properly sealed and finished off. To do a quality job, a project like this simply requires advanced planning. This truck lays so low on the ground that the going underneath the frame rails with the exhaust is just not going to happen. So we have to go over the frame rails, which then led to the idea that I had for the mufflers on this, which leads to, let's talk about the parts we're using on this project. For the mufflers on this build, we're running cherry bomb kind of straight through oval design mufflers, not the traditional cherry bombs you're probably used to, but a more mimicked design of a Magnaflow, a homage, if you will say. Honestly, they were cheaper than a Magnaflow. They seem to have the same build quality in my opinion. So this is what we went with. And you can see we've already mounted those. That was part of our earlier planning process when we were working on this build. We knew that because this truck is so low, we had a lot of dead space underneath the bed floor of the truck. And I had the idea years ago of mounting mufflers transversely here to do side exit exhaust. So that's exactly what we're doing on this build. At the other end of the exhaust, we have the swap headers that we're running on here. These are stainless steel construction with an inch and five eighths primary tube on them, three eighths inch thick flanges, and two and a half inch outlet collectors that came with them. Now these are generic headers. They are available from a range of companies all selling them under their own name produced overseas, but I'm honestly largely impressed with the build quality of them. I'm gonna throw a link in the description down below to a set of them that are actually a little bit better, but overall the same design as the ones we were running. So you can find that in the link in the description down below. Now let's talk about what is easily, arguably the most important piece of the puzzle here, the actual pipe we're gonna be using. I personally like to use mandrel bent tubes. I've worked in shops that had quality benders in the past and outside of niche cases, I don't use them. I always use mandrel bent pipes for my builds. I greatly prefer the unique bends and moves and angles and changes in design that I can get with mandrel bent tubes. The pipes that I've primarily been using for years now, I've used them to build headers, full custom exhausts, turbo systems, are from Speedway Motors. I used to really like these pipes in particular because of the way they come in this design. You get a 90 degree on the one end and 180 degree on the other end. With these two pieces and the couple of straight sections in between, you can achieve a lot on a build short of long straight runs. Now I am considering moving away from these pipes. I have found over the years, the consistency of them has gotten a little worse. From pipe to pipe, they're consistent. But what I mean is the actual bend consistency, how much of a good mandrel bend it is, has definitely decreased over the years. A true mandrel bend should have a consistent pipe diameter through the mandrel bend, meaning that I should be able to cut it at any point in that bend and rotate it on its axis right at that cut point. And it should match up. That hasn't been the case for the last couple of years when it comes to these pipes. If this were a high horsepower application, I would worry about this more. The turbulence created by the slight change in steps throughout the bends could reduce horsepower overall, but on a build like this, it's really not gonna be a big deal. 
I will be looking for different vendors in the future to use. If you have anybody you like using, let me know in the comments down below. But what I can say is I picked up a two pack of these off of Amazon for about $45 for the two of them. Next up, we have the hangers we're gonna be running on this build, which I have been loving these little polyurethane grommet snap together design that I get from Summit Racing. I've been using them for years now on builds. And as long as you design your mounts properly, I've been having great success with them. I'll discuss mount design a little more as I make the mounts on the build. And the last item we're going to talk about using here is the clamps that I have been exclusively using for the last, I don't even know how many exhaust builds that I have done, V-band clamps. I adore V-band clamps. These things are machined halves that go together. They have interlocks in them. So when you put them together, they should not shear apart from each other, meaning that it's easier to line them up. They also can be pivoted on their axis. So when you're trying to get a muffler oriented properly or a pipe angled the way it needs to be, they really help out. And they also don't seize together like other designs do because they have a more sheer mounting face and there's not so much of them slipping together. They don't have things to seize together. Together. The particular ones I picked up here have mild steel actual machined halves. You'll mostly find these in stainless steel construction for significantly more money. I got this four pack for a steal of a price. I'll throw it here because I don't remember offhand what it is. And the clamp that goes around them has this V design to sit, match the outside of the machined halves to squeeze them together as you tighten it up. And it is a stainless steel construction. And that means it's time to roll into actually getting this work done. And we're gonna start with what I recommend when it comes to those V band clamps. The first thing I recommend you do when when you're working with V-band clamps like I showed here is to disassemble them and apply some anti-seize to the threads of the actual screw on them. Most V-band clamps you get are gonna come with a stainless steel stud, a stainless steel sleeve, and a stainless steel nut. And when you have stainless steel on stainless steel, it does have a tendency to gall. You need to put anti-seize on stainless threads with a stainless nut. Okay, the first step of this build is definitely to step back and take a look at what we have to work with. We need to come off of those headers, follow the frame rail straight underneath the cab, and then through that trailing arm cross member, then to kick up to the mufflers and over the frame rails to the side exit tips. Just between you and me, I'm gonna give you a pro fabrication tip right now. There's a special tool you can use for your fabrication to help you in all kinds of ways, masking tape. In this specific situation, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it from frame rail to frame rail and it's gonna give me a guideline so I can visually see in open air where I cannot go below with my exhaust. I do this almost every time I build an exhaust system in some way, shape or form. Now I have two things to avoid right off of the headers. I've got the transmission cooler lines on the passenger side and the fuel line on the driver's side. They look closer to the header than they are in these images. They are farther away than they appear, but I'd still wanna avoid them as best I can. So I don't want to come straight off of those headers. If I did, I would be getting closer to those hoses than I should. That means I'm going to do a turn down and then a turn back with my pipes right off the bat. To do that, I'm going to pull out one of the best tools you can use when you're doing exhaust work, an angle finder. A budget angle finder will get the job done here. I'm going to hold that up to the face of the collector on this exhaust and use that to find the angle that I want and need for my first cut. Basically, I want to figure out the angle that I want my pipe to be heading at. Do I want it to head straight down? Downward, which would be a 90 degree. And if that's the case, then I wanna take that and uh, use the angle finder to find, say it's a 30 degree angle. And well, now I wanna make a 90 degree turn, I'm gonna to need to make a 60 degree cut. That is not what I would need to do in this particular situation, but that is just way you need to think when you're thinking about angles and cuts. Basically try to figure out what angle you're aiming for and what angle you have and start doing the math in between there. What the angle is it gonna to take to get from 30 degrees to 90 degrees or from 30 degrees to 180 degrees and work your way forward in the math problem. People hate it when I say this, but honestly, in my opinion, high school math, when everybody was always saying, where am I ever gonna use this in my life? Metal fabrication is where you use it. Now it's time to actually start transferring my angles so I can start cutting them onto my mandrel bends. Now, how am I gonna do that? There are various ways I can go about it. I have a tool that I've designed and I'm unfortunately not ready to disclose and discuss yet that I used for a lot of this build, but there are other ways to do this. One method I like to use is holding the flat end of the pipe onto a workbench and then using the angle finder to just go up and along the bend radius of the tubing until I get to the angle that I'm looking 
looking for and mark it there. This can be a little challenging to do without having three hands, and since I don't have three hands, yes, it is challenging. I've also been known to clamp it to the workbench and kind of hold it there so I can do this myself. If you're looking for like a 45 degree or a 90 degree, you can use a standard square to just slide it up against there and mark your tubing, then just eyeball marking away completely around the tubing. For flow characteristics, it is best to work within the actual bend radius of the tubing and making sure that you're always aiming for the center of the, the circle that the radius is forming. But you know, best laid plans and all that, we don't always do that. And as far as the rest of the bends in this are concerned, that's really it. Just rinse and repeat the process of what I'm talking about here over and over again. And a whole lot of times going to the porta band bandsaw and cutting away on this pipe. Normally after cutting on the bandsaw, I would head to a belt sander to get a nice flat finish on that cut, make sure it's good and smooth and flat because almost every joint on this exhaust is going to be a butt weld joint. So I need to make sure that I have a good fit from pipe to pipe. In this instance, I didn't have a belt sander handy in my dad's garage. So I just used my SX5206 SunX die grinder to stand that smooth. Now I generally like to work a couple pieces at a time. I try not to just do one angle, then the next angle, one after the other. I try to work like two angles, if not more together at once, because sometimes you, you hold one pipe up there and you go, yeah, that looks like what I'm trying to achieve. Then you hold the next pipe up and you realize that you headed in the entirely wrong direction. So in this situation, I'm using two pipes at the same time, mocking them up where I want them to be, and just kind of getting a visual on where I expect them to be. Then I'll set down one of the second pipe, and then it's time for one of my favorite things when I'm doing tube work, witness marks or indicator marks. After I get the clocking of these pipes where I think they're going to be, where I want them to be, I'll hold it in place against the connection it's going to be tacked or welded to, and I'll actually just mark a line with a Sharpie between those two pieces of pipe. So I can take that down, put it on the bench, and then put it back up there and clock it again. I generally try to do two or three of these around the pipe because just one sometimes doesn't tell the whole story. But once I have those, I can take that, set it aside and come back to it later and still have it back where I wanted it to be without having to fuss with it all over again. Now, after I've got those marks on there, I can go ahead and clock things back where I want them to be and start tacking pieces together. I tack the first piece onto the header collector and then I clock the lower piece after that. Now I am using my witness marks on the second piece as a guide. However, I'm gonna use a square off of the frame rail to finalize where I want that piece to be. Because I want my pipes to run parallel with the frame rails, I should be able to square the face of that pipe to the frame rail next to it and that should head straight back the way I need it to. Moving down with the exhaust, it's time to go for the straight sections that are gonna run underneath of the cab. They're just gonna be nice, long, straight pieces of tubing that head back through that trailing arm cross member that I mentioned earlier. Now I do have a limited window to fit through that trailing arm cross member. It's designed to fit upwards of like a three inch pipe, but it's not that roomy to get it through there. So what I did is take a piece of masking tape once again and some scrap metal from the welding bench and I taped it to that cross member. Now I can run a piece of pipe through there, lay it with gravity on top of that spacer and I can continue to work without having to worry about supporting the other end of it or making sure it's exactly where I want it to be, at least vertically, up and down. Now it's time to make our first exhaust hanger. I like to usually use two of those polyurethane hangers per hanger point that I'm trying to create that I mentioned earlier. If I just use one, it would give the pipe freedom to swing and move more, whereas I want it to be good and stable. I don't want it to be rattling around, especially in this particular situation, passing through that cross member there, it's a tight area to pass through, so I really worried about too much movement causing pipes to rattle off the cross member when the body flexes and things like that. Luckily with this particular design, I have nice beefy cross member mounting points that I use to mount my bushings to there. And then I just made a solid mounting bracket setup that went to the pipe itself. There's still plenty of give out there at the edge at the actual frame rails because they're both out there a little bit for a little torque. So their movement is a little exaggerated by leverage, but they're still really good and solid and gonna hold the pipes where I want them to be. I did make these two sections, the actual pipe and the bracket that goes to the frame rail, two separate sections that then bolt together once again. I did this for easier serviceability. This way you could actually leave those exhaust grommet brackets on the frame, unbolt the pipes and still remove the pipes themselves without having to mess with all of those bigger pieces individually. 
I use my drafting techniques to go ahead and draw up the design that I want to mount to the exhaust pipe and to the frame side for these support brackets. And then I go over to the bandsaw once again and cut away on these things so I can produce the brackets that I'm aiming for. I'm gonna be doing some CAD design videos in the near future. Let me know if you want me to show my hand design process as well in a video. Now that we made it to that trailing arm cross member, we have our first mount in place. It's time to start putting clamps in here for serviceability. I'm gonna put one of the V-band clamps at the end of each of these pipes just after they pass through that trailing arm cross member. That way I can easily disassemble this exhaust and be able to remove it in sections. A quick note, something I like to do when I'm using V-band clamps. As I mentioned, they have interlocking design with a male and a female side. You can see here on these pipes, I actually alternated from driver's side and passenger side, which is which on the exact pipes. The idea here is to make assembly later easier. If I have two pipes that are very similar in construction, I like to do this as an indication of where pipes are supposed to go. That way you can't accidentally put the wrong pipe or the wrong muffler on the wrong side of the vehicle. They might be just slightly different from side to side, so it will matter. So one thing that I had to do here because we are very limited on space and things are going to get complicated very quickly, I actually removed the mufflers from the truck and I cut off the inlets of them as flush to the muffler as I could, and then I cut a 90 degree turn right into those mufflers so I could make the tightest, quickest turn into the muffler that I could. This is a trick that I can use when I'm limited on space. If I would have used the spud little stick off portion of the muffler that it comes with, I would have been putting the pipe almost into the frame rails of a truck trying to make this tight turn of his transverse design. And now for the final time, and I'm gonna show you masking tape in this video. Well, I'd use it to draw a line from point A to point B. I really do use this stuff a lot. I need to do a dedicated video about masking tape, I think. I use it to the inside of the pipe on the pipe coming down the frame rail and to the inside of the pipe on the inlet of my muffler, point A to point B that I need to build in between. This gives me a plane and angle that I can stick the angle finder onto to tell me what kind of incline my pipe needs to be on. It's not gonna tell me the angles that I need to cut, but it's gonna give me a ballpark idea of where my pipe needs to be angled and oriented in this situation. As I was working on the exhaust going up over the frame rails and dealing with all that madness, I set my dad to a task forward. Since I had the forward pipes from the engine to their first mounts mounted, they were solidly located where they were going to be. Now it was time for the crossover pipe. If you're not familiar, there are whole videos out there, whole t articles about this topic, but crossover pipes are basically free horsepower. I know at multiple points in here I've said, well, you know, this isn't a high performance build, and this is gonna hurt performance, this might hurt performance, but this is horsepower that you are just leaving on the table if you're not doing it. Whether it be an X pipe or in our case, an H pipe, a crossover pipe can have multiple benefits. First, as I already said, you can gain horsepower from them. It balances the flow of exhaust pulses from one bank to the other bank. Now this has been proven on a dyno to increase horsepower. I'm not just talking out of my 12 volt rear here. But the other benefit that this can have is it can actually neutralize some of the harshness of an exhaust sound. Especially right underneath the cab, it can kind of mellow out the harsher, raspy, nasty tones that a lot of people are not fond of. The benefits of a crossover pipe are well worth the little additional labor that is involved with them. For my little spuds that attach to the crossover pipe, I kind of just held them up against the pipe and traced the outline of the two and a half inch pipe onto the little spud, and then I cut it out with a pair of hand shears and then ground that in until it fit to the pipe nicely. And then I just marked the pipe itself and opened that up, just going back and forth, alternating between messing with the piece I was gonna be attaching to the exhaust pipe and the exhaust pipe opening for the crossover. This is the part of the project where it was like midnight, 1 a.m. I had to get this portion of the project done. And also I was getting the very tight quarters where I wasn't able to set up a camera well to show you what I was doing. And as I said, it was a lot of rinse and repeat. So I didn't film much beyond here. Let's jump to looking at the finished product. Stepping back and taking an overall look at the exhaust, you might notice that it's only tacked together. I did leave it in a tacked state before I left North Carolina. I just did not have time to pull it apart and properly weld it all together. I really like to take my time welding an exhaust together. It will save a lot of headaches down the road. Just weld a little bit, step back, let that cool off, go to another weld joint and weld that. And having a ton of joints on an exhaust like this allows me to jump around quite a bit and allow those things to cool in between while I'm welding. I have experienced many times that if you just go hog wild on some of your joints, even with a nice butt welded joint, which should have a good fit and shouldn't move around much, it can move around and it can really change the orientation, the angle of your exhaust. You can sometimes weld on the side of a pipe and pull that pipe the direction of the weld. 
So these are things to consider when you're welding. Take your time, step back, and just enjoy the process because the time you spend now will save you headache down the road. This exhaust in particular was a fun challenge. It was really pretty straightforward going from the engine underneath the cab through that trailing arm cross member. That was a pretty straightforward, typical design. Everything after that was a heck of a puzzle. That's kind of why I said I really didn't film much more of this exhaust when it came into the bed area because it got complicated quick and I really didn't have the mental capacity to be filming it while also doing the work. Let me try, let me go ahead, while we're taking a look at this exhaust, let me explain to you what's happening here if you can't quite see what's going on. With the transverse muffler mount design like I have here, what you're actually seeing is the passenger side exhaust bank travels down the passenger side frame rail underneath the cab, goes up into the muffler, and when it turns up into the muffler, it actually goes across the truck and exits on the driver's side. So the exhaust exiting on the driver's side is the passenger side bank of the engine. The exhaust exiting on the passenger side, vice versa, is the driver's side exhaust bank. This transverse design is going to create a slightly strange little situation, but honestly, it's not going to matter. I mean, you just have to bear that in mind if you are blowing black smoke out of one bank, but either way, you're going to be tearing the engine apart, so does it really matter? The driver's side exhaust exit basically has a straight shot out of the muffler over the frame rail and then just had to angle down toward the tip. The passenger side exit one, which was the forward muffler, had to make a hard 90 degree turn around the pipe from the other muffler and then between the cross member for the raised bed floor then make a turn out toward the exhaust exit. It was definitely a bit of a challenge, but honestly it went together pretty straightforward as well because of just the few steps that I took to, to smooth the process out. Like I said, cutting off those muffler entry points so they could be tighter to the muffler bodies really helped me out when it came to the next steps. And finally, we actually ended in a pair of aluminum exhaust tips that my dad constructed some time ago that need a little tweaking and refining to get them where we want them to be. But with the trapezoid shape of the exhaust exit, no, it's parallelogram. What was that I said about a high school math? Rather than a round hole in a parallelogram, we went with a parallelogram in a parallelogram. How many times can I say parallelogram in one video? My dad actually took it upon himself to go ahead and weld out the entire exhaust. He took it all apart, took his time, did what I told him about just taking it easy and slow and welding it back together. And then he painted it and put it back into the truck. As I said earlier, we did choose mild steel in this build. For most builds that I do, I find that is sufficient. The additional cost of stainless can add up extremely quickly. The additional work required in TIG welding it, back purging it to do it properly. If you're not back purging it, you're wasting your time and you might as well just be doing mild steel anyway. There's a whole process involved with doing stainless that I generally, for most customers, find is over the top. And that's gonna wrap it up for the C10 exhaust build. I think overall this turned out really neat. It's a different take on things and we've got some things coming down the road that I'm gonna be showing you because my dad feels that all of this is just wasted not showing it off to people at shows. So you'll see what I'm talking about with that later on in the build. Hot Rod Hippie content is made possible in part by patrons on Patreon. These fine folks allow me to continue to create content for you folks so everybody can enjoy and learn from what it is that I'm doing. If you're interested in becoming a patron, please check it out, patreon.com slash Hot Rod Hippie that directly supports this channel and allows me to produce more content, hopefully even more in-depth stuff in the future as well. All right, folks, I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please drop it a like, it really helps out. Let me know in the comments down below, have you used any of these techniques on your exhaust builds? Are you gonna use them going forward? Let me know in the comments down below. Get subscribed to keep up to date with all the Hot Rod Hippie content. Thanks for coming around, folks.